mediocre. <laughs> Just kidding. That's probably gonna get used yeah, no. Um Keener. <laughs> I'm thinking of the U of A students. The people who do get in are some of the best and brightest um, anywhere. This department has had a lot of success and uh, that is founded in good mentoring of students. My love is speech pathology and being a clinician, honestly. Um, that's what brought me to this position was so that I could share some of that love, I guess, and um, hopefully inspire some students to work with people who have difficulty communicating. I love when students move away from worried about how they're doing on the exam or, you know, if they, if they got the right answer to, oh yeah, this is actually, there are people here who have communication problems and they want, I can help them. We have an in-house clinic that we work out of during the summer months and it's a great introduction. Students aren't um, put with clients alone, they do it in teams of four. And so in that group of four, without us engineering it, you almost inevitably end up with this really interesting mix of skills. I'm fine with the kids, but I'm not a great planner. Well, I'm a great planner, but I'm really nervous about talking to parents. Oh, I've dealt with families and other areas and I'm great at that academic portion. So you have this ability for them not just to learn from the clinical educator, but really focusing on creating a team where they learn from each other, which is a great model for what they'll do when they get out in clinic. The ease you into it. You have all the support you need. You have the resources of Corbett Hall and your sessions are recorded. So you can look back and really reflect on how you did in the session and you get the added feedback of your peers as well as the clinical educator. There's such a breadth of options for focusing on clinical expertise or research um, development that there, there are so many of those that I can't imagine a student who has an interest that could not be met with enthusiasm here at the University of Alberta. I think that uh, the teachers are really invested in the learning as well. They want to provide um, the best learning that they can to really prepare the students to be great clinicians and it's it's obvious in the work that everybody is um, going above and beyond. When I started exploring speech and language pathology what I liked about it is that your language affects every area of your life and so if you can help someone with their speech or their language you change their relationships, you change their education experience, you change their future career, you change everything about their life and I just love that what we do can really just be that change that makes a difference for someone for the rest of their life. For interested students, look at the people who are here, um, see if anything intrigues you about their research programs, and please feel free to contact us. I, I think that um, very often when you're on the other side, you're just never certain if it's okay to phone somebody up or send them an email and say, hey, I'm looking at you on the internet and I think your research program looks really good. Um, I think students might be afraid to do that, but they shouldn't be. We're all very open to receiving those kind of requests and I think they'd be pleasantly surprised at, at the responses that they would get.